Welcome pre-algebra, we're in lesson 121. Today I wanted to take the opportunity to introduce you to something called nets. This is a net. A net is the surface area of a geometric three-dimensional shape. So if you were to take this rectangular form right here, this box, and you were to lay each side flat down, this is the shape that you would have. So you could see that this is the bottom of the shape, the bottom of the rectangle. This is the bottom that it's sitting on right here. This bit, right? That's the base or the bottom. And then you have uh, the left and the right ends, these little squares here, the left and the right. And then you have, this is the back that we see here. This is the back right back here. So we'll call that the back that goes this way. And then this would be the front. This little section here is the front. It would fold straight up and this would be the part on the front. And then this last bit is going to be the top right here. This section is the top. And you see, I've corresponded each one of these locations to a part of the net. So you can visualize, we fold this up and we fold this up on the dotted line. We fold the back up, that's the left, the back, and the right. The left, the back, and the right. And then you have the front, and then you have the top, and it's all sitting on the bottom or the base. So that is what a net is. And a net is something that will help you visualize the surface area of a three-dimensional shape. So let's work a problem with this net right here. Um, we are going to have a box that is three um, tall. It is going to be four wide and five long. So that means this end here, this is going to be three, and this is going to be four, which means that this is going to be four, and this is going to be three. Now if the height is three, then this is three, and this is three, and this is three, and this is three. And if the width is four, think this is going to be laying over the top right here. So this is going to be four. Well, if this is three, we know the other is three. We don't have to have it duplicated. Um, but this is three, and this is four, and that means this width here is five this long side, okay? So now you can actually see all of the areas of this shape. That's gonna help you calculate the surface area of this rectangular shape. This is 121.1, by the way. So what we're gonna do is we're going to calculate each section. So the, um, let's start with the back. The back is three by five, so the back is equal to three times five, and that's 15, all right? The bottom, or let's call that the base. The base, the bottom, it's the same thing. So the bottom is going to be four by five. So four by five is 20. The left is three by four. So three by four is equal to 12. And the right is the same thing because they are opposites. The left and the right are the same measurement. So three by four is again equal to 12. All right, so we've got the back, the bottom, the left, and the right. Now we'll do the front. The front is gonna be three by five as well. So the back and the front are opposites. So the front is going to be 3 by 5 and that's another 15 and then the top should be the same as the base or the bottom and that's going to be 4 by 5 which is 20 and we'll add all those together we get 5 6 7 8 9 uh, plus 5 is 14 so 4 carry the 1 2 4 5 6 7 8 9 94 square units and um, 
that would be the surface area. Now remember a while back we talked about surface area um, and how they mirror, but we didn't exactly go into all the details. But this is how you would do it. You would lay out your net and visualize the top and the bottom, the front and the back, the left and the right. Now there's a faster way to do this. We can look and see where the similarities are and we can multiply. So we can see visually that the front and the back are the same dimensions. So we can say front and back is equal to 2 times 3 times 5, right? For a rectangle, this is for a rectangle or a um, rectangular prism. That just means a right rectangular shape. So 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times that is 30. Now we know that the top and the bottom are the same shape. They're 4 by 5. There's two of them, 4 by 5 and 4 by 5. So we can do the same thing, 2 times 4 by 5. Well, 4 by 5 is 20 times 2 is 40. So now we can look at the left and the right, and they are mirrors of each other as well, 3 by 4. So we can say the left and the right is going to equal 2 times 3 times 4. And that's going to be 12 times 2 is 24. So when we add all of that up together, we say 4, 7, 8, 9. We got the same number here that we did by doing them individually. Um, so for doing a rectangular prism, you can do it individual, just so you can see it, so you can see these rectangles, or you can remember that the front and the back are the same, the top and the bottom are the same, and the left and the right are the same, and just double those measurements. And that's a little bit faster, okay? So let's talk about the volume based on what we see from the net. So once we did the net, we can see the volume here as well. So our volume for this shape is going to be the three dimensions multiplied against each other, the length, the width, and the height. So the volume for a rectangular prism is length times width times height, which in this case is going to be three times, or actually the length is five because it's the longest measurement. So five and the width is four and the height is three. So five times four is 20 times 3 is going to be 60. So 60 square units, or I'm sorry, 60 cubic units because you have three dimensions multiplied against each other. Here we only have square units because we have two dimensions that are multiplied. Here we have three dimensions that are multiplied. So if it happened to be meters, it would be meters cubed, right? Because of three dimensions. So you can see the difference between the surface area and the volume. It's not going to be the same value. All right, so now let's look at a different shape and I'm gonna put that up here for us, hold on. All right, now this shape um, is a triangular prism, a right triangular prism. And you can see from the net here that we have a base, a front and a back, and a left slope and a right slope, or I put slope left, slope right. And you can see how that corresponds here. We have the base, we have the slope on the left, the slope on the right, and we have a front and a back. So this net helps us to see all the parts that we have to calculate for surface area. So let's go ahead and do that. So total surface area. Let's look at that, the total surface area for this shape. Let's think about it for a moment. From looking at this, it looks like the front and the back are gonna be the same. So let's say front and back is gonna be two times, whatever that calculation is. And if you notice, they're triangles. The front and the back are triangles. We have a height of three and a base of four. We know the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. All right, so let's do that calculation. The base times the height is 12. 
All right, so that's going to be two times three times four over two. So 12 divided by two is six times two is 12 again. So these two actually just cancel out. So this is going to be 12 and this is in meters. So let's do meters square. So 12 meters square for the front and the back. So if you look at the slope left and the slope right of this particular uh, right triangular prism, they are the same um, measurement. We have a five on the side and a five at the base, right? Five at the length, we have a five on the side and a five base, so five by five for both of these. So we can do the left and the right at the same calculation two times, but this time we don't need to divide it by two because it is a rectangle. Rectangle, So base times height or length times width, whatever you want to call it, uh, that's going to be two times five times five. That's going to be 25 times two, which is 50 and it's meter square because it's in meters. Or I'm going to say it's in meters. So now all we have left is the base and the base we can see is five wide, which is the same as all of these measurements here, but it is four right here. So the base is going to be four times five, which is the base, uh, the width times the length, and that's going to equal 20 meters squared. So I'm just going to take this and move it over so that it's in line with the rest of it. And then I can add them all together. The meter square comes down. This is two and this is eight. 82 meters squared would be the surface area of this particular um, shape. Right? Now remember how to find the volume of a um, right triangular prism. The volume is going to be half of those three measurements combined. So we are going to do the volume of a triangular prism is going to be the base times the height times the length divided by two. That's the volume for a right triangular prism. In that case, this is going to be uh, four times three times five over two. Four times three is 12. 12 times five is 60. 60 divided by two is going to be 30. So that is going to equal 30 meters and this is going to be cubed because we multiplied three dimensions. What you're actually doing, I'm going to go ahead and write this out for you so you see it better. You're saying four meters times three meters times five meters. So you're using meters one, two, three times. So we know when we multiply variables, we take that exponent and we add them together. That's what we're doing. Meters once, meters twice, meters three times, so meters cubed is our answer. All right. So volume for a uh, right triangular prism is not very difficult at all. It's just one simple calculation here. Surface area takes a little bit more effort, but drawing out the different surfaces is going to help you create your net so that you can see what you're doing and then you can add the different parts together as you need to. So do that for each type of um, surface area problem. So let's talk a little bit about symmetry. A figure is symmetric about a line if one side of the figure is a mirror image of the other. So let me draw an illustration of that to show you. So let's talk about symmetry for a moment. Here's the shape that I promised a figure is symmetric about a line if one side of the figure is a mirror image of the other side of the figure. This quadrilateral, it is a quadrilateral because it has four sides, one, two, three, four, 
is symmetric about line R. So let's put line R right here. I love how this straightens up for me even when I do a terrible job. This is line R, right? So we can see that about this line, on that means on either side of the line, that this is a symmetric shape. And we can tell that because of the dimensions and the points. So they both start, both um, sides start at the same point, And they both go down to, let's see, this is not as symmetric as I want it to be. Let me move it down just a bit right to there. All right, so now we have... From the center line, we have one, two, three, four, five, six intersections or six squares and on that side, and then one, two, three, four, five, six squares from the center line on this side. And they both stop on the same line, so it tells me both of these are mirror images of the other. Um, and there's a way that you can tell. Figures are symmetric about a line if the perpendicular distance from any point on the line to the figure is equal to the perpendicular distance from the same point to a corresponding point. So basically, if we measure from here to here, let's say we make this a line right here at this, at this grid mark, this is two units or two squares from this point to this point and two units from this point to this point to the center line. And we know they're the same distance because we can measure that here. One, two, three. They're both three from the top and two over. And this one is two over to the left. This one's three from the top and two over to the right. So we know that those are the same distance. Same thing here. We know that these are uh, six from, here's the center line. I'm gonna draw it just a little bit further. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six squares from the center to the point, and one, two, three, four, five, six squares from the center to the point, and that's with a perpendicular measurement from intersection to intersection of that perpendicular line. So we have demonstrated that, and uh, we know because of this, we'll even pick another point. Let's pick a point here. I'm going to just draw a line that's perpendicular to the symmetrical line or to the point of rotation or symmetry. And I'm going to measure uh, from this point here where it intersects this line. We have one, two, three, four. That's four. And I have one, two, three, four to this point of intersection. So these three lines tell me that this is a symmetrical shape and that this is the axis of symmetry, the line of symmetry that this side of the shape is reflected around. So a figure can have more than one line of symmetry. How is that possible? Let's draw a shape and show you. So for instance, if I were to have an equilateral triangle, if I can get it to draw correctly, here we go. So if this were an equilateral triangle, then that would mean that I would have an axis of symmetry here, or a line of symmetry. This side would be equal to this side. They'd be mirror images of each other. And then this side, if this splits the base at the bottom here, this side would be equal to this side of this axis of symmetry. And then I'd have another one at this vertex. And uh, this side of the triangle would be equal to this side of the triangle. If this were an isosceles, where all of these were the same length, then I would have three lines of symmetry um, in one figure. Okay. Now in a square, let me draw a square right quick. If it'll let me draw a square. It's not going to let me draw a square today. It's going to be hard headed and a pain in the hiney. Let me try it again. Let's do this side, then this side, then this side, then this side. All right, let me turn that into a shape. Let 
It's giving me a hard time here. All right, we're going to imagine a square. We're just gonna imagine one. Let me try one more time. See if I get lucky. There we go, now I have a square. So we can draw an axis of symmetry in this shape this way. Everything on this side would be mirrored on this side. We could draw one this way. Everything on this side would be mirrored on this side. But we could also draw one diagonally. And we'd have two identical triangles with the same base. And then likewise, I could do the same thing this way. And I would have two triangles with the same base. So I could have four lines of symmetry in this shape. Figures can also be symmetric about a point. So let me show you one of those. A figure that is symmetric about a point. Um, this looks kind of like a half circle and a line and a half circle and a line. And the point is going to be right here. This is not exactly straight or perfect, but what that means is that every distance from the point is going to be the same. So the distance between this point and this point are going to be equal. The distance between this point and this point, these two are going to be equal. The distance between this point and this point are going to be equal. So that is how you see a shape symmetrical about a point. So it's symmetrical, the distance here and the distance here are the same, right? So we have some symmetry going on there. All right, uh, a figure is symmetric about a point if for any line drawn through the point, it is the same distance in both directions to corresponding points on the figure. Can you think of another shape that is like that? How about a circle? A circle, you have a point in the middle, right? And yes, we could draw a line and it would be symmetric around a line of symmetry, but a circle is the ultimate symmetric about a point shape because the radius is the same no matter where you go. So all you have to do is draw a line through and get the diameter is the same here to here as it is here to here, all the way around. Sometimes we can use symmetry to help us solve problems. So I'm going to set this up for you and show you how to do that. All right, so here we have a symmetric figure and the dimensions are in yards. This is 121.3. Dimensions are in yards. And we have, uh, these are all right angles here. And these are all the same shape. And we have a um, a leg of two here and a leg of two here and they are all the same so this is two this is two so we can find the area of this symmetric figure pretty easily we'll just say this is area one area two area three and area four because we know they're all the same shape we know that they're all equal to each other so we can say four times area one and get the total area of this shape, right? That just makes sense. So if it is a right triangle with a leg of two and a leg of two, that's a length and a width, we can say that the area is gonna equal four times because there are four shapes here that are the identical shapes, four times the length times the width or the base times the height, however you want to say it, divided by two. And that is going to be our um, area here. So that is going to be four times two yards times two yards divided by two. 
So two times two is four, divided by two, that's two yards square. Eight, four times two yards square is eight. So eight yards square is the area of this figure because we solved one and then multiplied it by the number of congruent figures that we had. So that's how we can use symmetry when we calculate. We use symmetry so that we can calculate, excuse me, so we can calculate faster. Um, otherwise, we would have had to have done each one of these individually. This is just a faster way to do it, and it's a very common sense way to do it. And that's all we have for Lesson 121, and I will see you in Lesson 122.